like yourself. I'm gonna go take a nap. Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. Today we are talking fruit trees. You saw I have my new lemon tree that I'm going to be planting today and I'm super excited about that because that was definitely something that my orchard needed. So one of the selling points to this house was that it had a pretty mature orchard already which is just fantastic. We have two navel orange trees that are just, they produce like crazy. We also have a lime tree that produces like crazy fig and pomegranate and apricot. And we did have a couple other like stone fruit, like nectarine and um, peaches, but they were kind of diseased. So I ended up just taking those out. Um, but we did not have a lemon tree in here, which is kind of crazy because everybody in California has a lemon tree. Like everybody has an orange tree. Um, so I knew I wanted to get a lemon tree somewhere. And then when I was redoing this garden bed right behind me, I knew I needed something with height right there. So I was going back and forth on what I wanted. I've even, I even talked to all of you about it. Um, I knew I wanted evergreen and a lemon tree is evergreen. So it ended up just being perfect and fit in perfectly with the orchard. So this tree that I have right here is actually a Eureka lemon tree. And it's the Eureka lemon and the Meyer lemon are two of the most common lemon trees. Jason and I decided that we did want a Eureka lemon. Eureka lemons produce lemons that you you get in the grocery store like the lemons that you think of when you get in the grocery store or the slice of lemon that's in your iced tea is basically a lemon that's come from a eureka lemon it's a true lemon it's kind of bitter but it has that tang to it that i love with lemons now a meyer lemon tree is super popular meyer, meyer lemons are a mix between regular lemons and mandarins so they're sweeter um to me they don't give the same tang as a, a Eureka lemon and Jason felt the same way. We actually have a couple Meyer lemon trees in pots, but we knew we wanted a like a regular, regular lemon tree right here. Um, so a Eureka lemon, the seeds originated in Italy and then they brought the seeds over here to California and then it really got developed in California. So I know it's a good tree for me here in Northern California. They do get taller than a, a Meyer lemon. So a regular Eureka lemon can get like 15 to 20 feet tall. This is what you call a semi-dwarf Eureka lemon tree and this one is going to get anywhere between 10 and 15 feet tall and then you can get a dwarf Eureka lemon that's about six feet tall. A Meyer lemon is is around the same size as the dwarf uh, Eureka lemon. A Meyer lemon is usually sold as an improved Meyer lemon dwarf. That's usually the ones that you find at the garden center and those will be around six to eight feet tall. So I went with the semi-dwarf Eureka lemon. We're going to have plenty of lemons to to enjoy once it develops. It will start producing fruit um, about the third year is usually what they say. This is a pretty, I mean, you know, it's not huge, uh, but it is, I, I mean, I feel like I'm probably going to get lemons in like maybe a year or two. We'll see. We'll see how it does. Um, but one of the things that was really important to me for a tree right here is I wanted all this area around here to still plant under. So I knew I wanted to, I, I know I want to prune my lemon tree up into a lollipop shape. So when I saw this tree at the garden center, you can see the, it has a really, really good trunk and it's going to be really easy for me to um to prune it into that lollipop shape. You can sometimes find lemon trees that will have kind of branches coming from lower and they almost look a little bit more bushy. And then as they get older, they'll become more of a tree, but this one already started off as a tree. So I was really excited that I found it. So both Meyer lemons and Eureka lemons are not cold hardy. They are zones nine through 11 and they really don't like temperatures in the thirties. They can handle down to the twenties, but not for very long. So here where I live, I'm in zone nine B, the coldest we get is about 28 to 29 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's very rare. 
Um, so I would say, and you can kind of see people around town, when we get a cold snap, like when we get down to the low 30s or possibly even the 20s, you'll see people come out and they'll throw sheets or harvest guard over their young lemon trees. Once this lemon tree gets a little bit more established, I won't have to worry about it and I can just leave it and it'll be fine. But for the first couple of years, I'm probably going to come out and I'm probably going to protect it from cold temperatures. Um, so just because it's zones 9 through 11, it's, it's not cold hardy doesn't mean those of you who live in lower zones can't have a lemon tree. A lot of people grow lemon trees in pots and probably the best thing that you you can do is put that pot on a disc that has wheels on it so that once it starts to get cold you can wheel that lemon tree either into your garage or into your greenhouse or just a protected area leave it there all winter and then bring it back once the temperatures get warmer so just a little bit more work if you live in lower zones but I think it's worth it. I mean, we have we eat so many lemons. We consistently buy lemons from the grocery store. So this is a really, really good tree to be planting in our orchard. Let me talk a little bit about how I am planting this tree. I've got it in the perfect spot that I want it. You can see that I dug my hole about twice the width of it, but about only one times the height. And I actually did it even a little bit more shallow so that a couple inches, it's basically one to three inches, so I always aim for two inches, of the root ball is above the level of your soil. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna make sure that this lemon tree doesn't get too much water. It likes water, but it doesn't like a ton of water. And this garden bed right here, I'm having some drainage issues. So I just want to make sure that it doesn't get too much water. It doesn't get bogged down. So I'm going to, um, counteract those drainage issues by planting it a little bit taller and it's always best to plant it taller rather than lower the worst thing you can do is plant a tree too deep into a hole so that's why i have it kind of like that and you can see the root ball is a little bit higher than the hole right there I will cover it with mulch, but keep the mulch right away away from the trunk right here. And then what I did is I did put Biotone Starter Fertilizer in. That's going to help with the root growth and everything like that. The last time, at least for California, the last time that you want to fertilize your citrus trees is in September because you kind of want them to go to sleep um, and you don't want any new growth or anything like that once it starts to get cold. So because it is September right now, I'm not going to fertilize this lemon tree until February. I'm just not going to touch it until February. So it's going to be perfectly happy. I'm still going to water it consistently. Um, I'm going to be putting it on drip, uh, but I pretty much don't have to do anything to it for the next couple months.
right, Eureka lemon is planted. I now have a lemon tree in my orchard, hooked up to drip, all ready to go. The only thing I do think I'm gonna need to do, I don't need to do it right now, but I need to, I think I need to stake it. And I think I'm just gonna stake it. You saw me take away the transport stake, which is close right next to the tree. That just gives the tree too much, um, too much assistance. It doesn't give it enough movement to grow strong on its own. So I'll probably put in two stakes on either side and then tie um, a loose strap around it uh, just to make sure that it doesn't blow over in a big wind windstorm or something like that. But I'm pretty happy with it and I'm excited to finally have a lemon tree planted in my orchard. So now time for some harvesting. I don't think my pomegranates are quite ready yet. I am very anxious <laughs> for them to be ready. I want, you know, I have never been a huge fan of my pomegranate tree. It kind of, to me, it's just kind of I don't know. It's fine. It just kind of looks a little scrubby to me, but I hashtag team pomegranate. All you people who love pomegranate talked me into it and I am definitely keeping it. And part of the reason is because I mean, it's so prolific for pomegranates. I have, I don't know, 20 pomegranates on there or something, and I'm just waiting for them to ripen. So not quite yet. I need to be patient. Let me show you my pumpkins though. So in my center island, you all know that I had no plans for the center island this year. I, I was going to do nothing to it and I couldn't help myself. I had to plant a whole bunch of cut flowers, some corn to hide the propane tank. And then I had this berm right here, this raised area, and I decided to plant pumpkins on it. And I'm so glad I did because I've never planted pumpkins before. And I'm so darn proud of these three pumpkins right here. And I have more coming. There's definitely more coming, but oh my goodness, I am so happy. So these are jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. I forget what they're called, but I'll put it, I think it's champion. I'm pretty sure it's champion. Um, and so these are carving pumpkins so the girls can carve them. And then I did some other pumpkins, some weeby little pumpkins where they can paint. And the one, uh, I don't know, disappointment that I had is I was going to go on the back of the seed packet how many days so that they would be ready by Halloween. But instead, I got swayed by listening to other people kind of in my area saying, oh, it's time to plant pumpkins, plant your pumpkins. And so I planted mine and I think I planted mine a little too early because obviously it's the beginning of September. I don't, I didn't want these to be ready for two more months basically so the girls can uh, carve them. So that's the only thing, I mean, that's the thing that I learned about pumpkins this year. Really pay attention to the back of the seed packet so they can be ready by Halloween, which is when I want them. I'll probably end up using these for decoration um, until then. And if they last until then, then the girls can carve them. I did have another vine that was over here and it was growing big, beautiful pumpkins. And then all of a sudden the whole thing died and the pumpkins got mushy and gross. And Jason and I didn't know what happened. And then when we looked a little bit closer, the stalk that was coming out of the ground, like this, the original stalk had completely cracked in half. And we're pretty sure the culprit was Monty. <laughs> so another thing I learned about uh, pumpkins, keep your dog away from them. <laughs> Oh, it's getting hot out here today. We have, I think, one more week of hot weather and then I'm, I'm hoping it'll start to cool down. So I'm headed over to the lime tree right now. I'm pretty sure the limes are ready. There's a couple ways to tell if your limes are ready to be harvested. One of them is their color. You want them to be a good green color. Oh, oh my gosh, a hummingbird just came right up to me. What? Oh, what? That is not a hummingbird. What is that thing? Oh my gosh. What? On, what? Can you guys see that? What the heck is that thing? Is it a moth? What is that thing? Ah! Ah! What are you? What is that thing? Oh my God, there's more than one. Guys, what is this? What on earth is that? What? Um, gross. <laughs> gross. I, gross. I just posted it on Instagram on my stories to see if someone can identify it for me. Um, but yeah, it looks like those crazy creepy bugs from the movie, The Mummy. Do you guys know the scarabs? Yeah. Yeah, that's scary. 
<laughs> anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, they literally keep flying around here. They're obviously enjoying the figs. <laughs> but <laughs> I am not comfortable right now. Hi, everyone. Editing Janie here. All right, so I figured out what that thing was. It's called a fig eater beetle, which I think is a very apt name. Apparently, it's very common in Southern California. It's all over the place, probably because they have so many fruit trees down there. But yeah, it is absolutely gross. It's often uh, mistaken for June bugs and Japanese beetles, but both are smaller than this fig eater beetle, which is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> so it's native to the areas of the American Southwest and its diet is just kind of rotting fruit. So it makes sense why it was on my figs. I can't believe I had never seen that before but it's really interesting. So I did look up if they were dangerous and they said that fig eater beetles are generally harmless and actually quite attractive. Many people don't mind their presence in the garden, but due to their clumsy air raid flight habits and loud buzzing, they may wear out their welcome in a hurry. Uh, Absolutely, yes. And then I found this funny article when fig beetles attack, which it just kind of justified how I felt filming today. <laughs> I, I am not comfortable with these things flying around me. It's like toads, right? I'm fine with everything else, but then toads freak me out. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Harvesting limes is aborted. <laughs> well, I got my lemon tree planted. That's good. I'm gonna try and identify the scarabs. Maybe they are scarabs. I don't even know if that's a real bug. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.